an example problem of what I could ask you to do with weak acids. For 0.4 molar HCN, find the pH and the percent associated. First thing I want to ask myself, be in the habit of it, is is this a strong acid or base? Is this one from the list of strong acids and bases that I should have memorized? Or if you're at home, that do I have them in my notes? Um, no, that is not one of our strong acid or bases, so I know I'm working with something weak. Now, it starts with an H, probably a fair bet that it's an acid then. So I'm going to do a weak acid problem. You haven't learned how to do weak base problems yet, so that's obvious, but I want you to be in the habit of what you'd be thinking about once you've learned all the different types. So I have a weak acid. The first thing I want to do with that weak acid is dissociate it. Since it's weak, I use equilibrium arrows. Since it's an acid, an H plus falls off. That leaves me with CN minus. Equilibrium arrows, because it's weak, equilibrium arrows tell me I can use an ice chart. Um, it tells me I have 0.4 molar HCN. My ice chart's going to be in molarity, so 0.4 molar HCN. And it doesn't tell me anything else. So my initial values, when they're not mentioned, will be zero. This side with zero gets a plus. The side without zero gets minus. Now, here's what's cool. I know you're all probably in a miserable, miserable mood already because I just started doing an ice chart. But if you think back to the definition of a weak acid, or not the definition, but what the word weak really means, weak means it fairly dissociates, like fairly, tiny, tiny, tiny percentage. Um, so, even though what I would normally write here without any other numbers is 0.4 minus x and x and x, um, what we're allowed to do, and this is not just for my class, this is pretty widely accepted, we're allowed to ignore the minus x. Now, why? Remember, it's barely dissociating. It's weak acid, barely dissociating. That means that x is probably tiny compared to 0.4 x is probably so small, we are assuming that x is way less than, that's what a double less than sign means, it's insignificant, way less than 0.4. So we're saying that 0.4 minus x still just equals 0.4. Um, we don't do that here though, and, and here's why. You're like, well, if x is so tiny that subtracting it from 0.4 doesn't matter, why do we not cross it out here? Well, if you had a ton of money, and you lose a dollar, and I ask you how much money you have, you're not going to really take that dollar into account. You have a lot, you lose a tiny bit, and eh, you still have a lot. Who cares if it's a dollar less? If you have absolutely nothing, zero, no matter how, if I only give you a dollar, that dollar matters to you. That dollar is significant. It is substantially more than nothing. So for all weak acids and bases, you can make the assumption that this minus x is insignificant, but the plus x will, will matter. You have to do that. Okay, so we did a dissociation, we did an ice chart. If you remember, something else we can always do is like a K expression. For acids though, it'll be a K A expression, where we do products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, but you're actually never gonna have coefficients because you're only taking away an H plus, you're just separating it. So you should have no coefficients. Um, setting that up, my products are always the right-hand side over my reactants. Now, the last time we did these was with KSP, where this was a solid and you ignored it. That's not the case anymore. Um, and then you'll go to that Ka chart. You'll say, this is the weak acid. It's always the thing on the left. That's what we're dissociating. That's what we started with. You'll look up its Ka value and you would see that it's 5.8 times 10 to the negative 10. I would pause here and make sure you know you go to the chart and see where I'm getting that number from. It's for HCN. I can then plug my equilibrium values in, so keeping this 5.8 times 10 to the negative 10, it equals x times x. If you want to just write x squared, you can. I'll do that on the next step. Over 0.4. Again, we ignored the minus x. You can do it with the minus x there. Do it once, you'll see that our final answer is not that different and it's not worth the complicated math. In fact, 
I take that back. Don't even, just trust me. Don't even do it. It's not worth it. Um, now, here I want to solve for x. That's something I can do. Um, so I'll put this over 1, cross multiply. Um, 5.8 times 10 to the negative 10 times 0.4 gets me 2.32 times 10 to the negative 10. x times x times 1 is just x squared. By square root both sides, I'll get an x value of 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, we just did all that work, and frankly, that's most of the problem. But we did that without any idea how it relates to pH or percent associated. For all weak acids and bases, once you've identified what type it is, you can dissociate it, do your ice chart with this assumption, get your Ka off your chart, and plug into products over reactants. You show all of this work every time, because by the time you're here, you're like, what on earth do I have? Well, let's think about what X represents. Go back to my ice chart. X represents a lot of things, but the thing we care about, X, represents my H+. Plus. So once I have this HCN, it automatically dissociates a little bit, and now I know how much H+, plus, what concentration of H+, plus I have in this solution. So for part A, I want the pH. pH is negative log of my H+. Plus of 1.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. I negative log that, and I get my pH equal to 4.82. How this is different from a strong acid, a strong acid you would have just, if, the, if this were strong, which it's not, you would have said, oh, it's a single arrow, so I can use a mole ratio, and it's one to one, so my H plus is 0.4, negative log. You would skip all of this. Can't do that with weak acids. Um, for part B, my percent dissociated, I'm saying how much of the 0.4 actually broke down. We know it should be really small. We know it should barely dissociate. Um, I'm always going to take the part that went away, minus x, it's going away. So I'm always going to take the part that went away over what I started with times 100. Um, the part that went away is this 1.5 number. 1.5 to the negative fifth over what I started with, and don't forget the times 100. Um, we should get a small value since it's weak. We know it shouldn't dissociate much. So we get 0 .00, this is after I multiplied by 100, 0.00375% barely dissociates. That makes sense. If you have it in scientific notation, 3.75 times 10 to the negative 3%, that's also fine. All right, try it.